Our final film features a railway practice that had truly reached the end of the line when Pat and John went to Paddington Station on the 9th of September 1960 to make a film that was to appear in Railway Roundabout on the 15th of November that year. At the back of the 1710 Paddington to Wolverhampton Business Express was an unusual carriage, the very last example of a slip coach to be used in Great Britain ever. The practice of uncoupling or slipping a coach from a moving train had lasted just over a century, the first having been dropped from a Brighton Express at Haywards Heath Freespawn in February 1858. The demise of the slip coach was gradual, but its disadvantages outweighed the time savings in the end. Passengers were confined to the slip coaches and couldn't access refreshment facilities, which didn't make them popular. They needed extra staff in the form of specially trained guards, and the ultimate problem, they couldn't, by definition, have balancing workings. The train left Paddington bang on time, with one of our cameramen on board, and one waiting at the line side at Vista, where the coach was to be slipped. Riding with the guard, the changing scene outside Paddington was recorded at Ranella Bridge, where a castle accompanied a warship diesel. Through the end windows, the double tail lights at the back of the main train would indicate to signalmen along the route when or if the slip coach had been uncoupled from the train. The guard had two controls, the slip lever and the brake. The action of slipping the coach would automatically seal the brake hoses on the end of the main train and the slip coach, avoiding a loss of vacuum therein. To prepare for the slipping to take place, the guard first had to remove the safety pin. At Bicester, preparations were being made to receive the slip coach. The first thing to happen was the arrival of the 1640 Paddington to Burnbury train, which would pick up the slip. A rather grimy 5023 Brecon Castle had been rostered on this historic day, and it would wait in the platform road as the non stop King Hall Express would use the dam through. Unfortunately, the actual King used wasn't recorded. In the slip coach, the guard pulled the slip lever as the tail of the train was about 100 yards short of the up advanced starter quite close to the station, as the coach encountered an upgradient as it entered the station. This, of course, was an undoubted safety bonus. The open hook of the special slip coupling can be seen, as can the guard, through the open drop light at the front of the coach. Using his brake, the guard brought the coach to a smooth stand adjacent to the castle and brought an end to the era of slip carriages in Great Britain. To many people, including Jim Russell, who lived in Bicester, it symbolised the end not only of an era, but of a way of life. The shunter, another of the extra costs borne by slip workings, secured the brake hoses and couplings so that the castle could move out to couple on to the slip coach. The last coach itself was a Hawksworth composite built to lot 1690 right at the end of the GWR's independent existence. Thirteen were built and three were converted to slip coaches in 1958, this one being number 7374. The double tail lamps, one with a white target, indicated that only one coach had been slipped, and on this occasion, that it would never be slipped again. The complications of working slip coaches are all too obvious here. Only Vista passengers benefited. Those for other stations to Banbury had to endure a long wait here, and hereafter would have a better service. Vista passengers from London would have to leave a little earlier, but would only have a marginal increase in their travel time. At the height of the popularity of the slip coach in 1914, the Great Western had operated 72 slip services a day, out of over 200 in the country. It was truly sad to see such an eccentric British working practice come to the end of the line.